remember what I set my boost controller to. I think it's more than 12, but not more than 20 something. Roll in and see. gentlemen it's time for the facts we're gonna go over the facts see how everything looks so that first clip was me on my way to the dyno I was going to tune a friend's car and decided that I would take the truck and throw it on after if we had a good experience with his and I had time and we did so this is right after I got all my sensor squid installed and I got all my neat sensors and we could check out some interesting things so on the way down, I set up the boost controller to run approximately 19. Uh, in the video, it looks like 20, but you're always looking down at that boost gauge, so you get a little skew. You see a little extra, in my opinion. So this first hit on the dyno, 45 makes about that 19 on the street. So I typed in 46 for the first hit, and we went straight for the throat. And we hit 20 pounds at 6,000, and when I lifted at 7,000, it crept about a pound. Uh, it looks worse than it is, but this setup always comes up about a pound uh, during the whole sweep. Uh, one incredible thing is uh, it was hot even at night, and from 85 to 100 degree inlet, extremely good. Uh, the Duramax intercooler seems to be incredible and uh, good air fuel good trims duty cycle 90 percent i don't know why something funny here it's because it's over near the rev limiter i noticed uh, when i go for the very end it seems like there's a ton of injector being used but if you look here it's only about 80 percent it jumps like 10 percent near the rev limiter for some reason and then i got my extra sensors here which show some incredible things so uh, one funny thing you guys will notice, let's watch fuel pressure, this pink line here where the mouse is. Fuel pressure, uh, the second, the it has three pumps. It's running on one pump, and then it's turning on two and three at the same time at 10 PSI at over 3,000 and over 25 TPS. There's three flags for it. So when you're flooring it at 10 pounds, the fuel pumps come on, and you can see it jumps... Uh, it's on its way up nice and smooth, and then it goes 60, and then it goes 64, 66, uh, 68. It comes up with a, a nice bump in fuel pressure for sure. So you can see the boost controller output's at 46%. Uh, one neat thing we saw was my coolant was a little low on the dyno because we just got it on. Another uh, hilarious thing, not so hilarious, but funny and circumstantial. Uh, when I go in to pull on the dyno, I blew a brake line on the truck. All this mayhem and driving around and, and beating it up, uh, it blows a brake line getting on the dyno. How funny is that? So, I actually have pretty significant fuel pressure here. Look at that. I want to keep it under 80 pounds. They fall off pretty bad over 80 PSI. So if I run a ton of boost, uh, I might even try to get it down to like 30. And you can see here in the 20 pound range, uh, exhaust pressure is surprisingly smooth and I believe that's because of the coil coiling the pipe up like I did so what's neat to see is uh, it goes up and down but it's roughly identical to boost pressure and that's really nice to see because when your turbo is at one to one you're really not fighting any backups in either direction 
And another interesting thing is my coolant pressure is pretty low. Uh, the, the coolant temperature was a little bit low on the dyno hits, but even on the street at like 210 degree coolant temp, I never go over 14 pounds. It's mostly 13 every now and then it'll, it'll tickle 14, but it's neat to see that as a good baseline. And I have it in the upper rad hose because from what I've seen, people have them in the cylinder head and there's a lot of noise there and it's tough to tell, in my opinion, what's going on. Maybe it's the closest spot to the source, but man, it is turbulent. Uh, there is tons of noise on the incoming pressure. So I don't know if that's necessarily the best thing to try to gauge, uh, you know, an issue. There's a ton of, ton of noise. I'm like, man, how can you tell if anything's wrong with, uh, it bounces all over the place. It's, it's really bad anyway. So what's cool is coolant pressure is outstanding. The whole time the boost is coming up, coolant pressure is low. So obviously there's nothing getting in. Oil pressure always so-so. Uh, <laughs> what else can we say? The oil pressure sensor is in the top of this block. I don't even know if it's scaled correctly. This truck came with a China 0 to 100. So maybe one day we'll stick the low dollar in there and have it scaled correctly. Another thing that I'll bring up real quick is I believe the top of the block oil pressure is always the worst case scenario because that's the last place that gets oiling. So what you're seeing is the deficit from all of your hard parts leaking. What I'd love to do sometime is get oil pressure at the housing or at the filter. There's that hex plug. I would love to get oil pressure there straight out of the pump before the filter, before the housing, before the cooler, before everything and then all the way to the top of the block and see the delta. I'd be very interested to see if it has good oil pressure in the bottom of the block out of the pump and not great at the top. So it means it's losing a lot somewhere. Anyway, we'll move on. Uh, one to one back pressure, really good. Uh, coolant pressure, really good. The crankcase two bar is hilariously low in my opinion because it, it never goes over two pounds. And what I'd have to explain uh, this number is so yes, I uh, interrupted myself there. What I want to explain is this has the stock breather system. Nothing's going into the intake, so nothing's getting pressurized there. But all it has is the stock two three-eighths or so valve cover vents. There's the one on the oil fill cap passenger side that normally goes into the throttle, and then the intake sucks uh, some oil vapor and some crankcase pressure there to you know, get you down into the negatives if possible. And then on the other side, that goes into, where does that go? Top of the intake, I believe, from the back of the PCV check valve. So what this has is no PCV check valve. It has a vent out of the back driver's side and completely vented out of the passenger front. So those two little three eights, if you could even call them three eights barbs, and that's it. And then now the funny part of this is, I took the 3 8 barb on the driver's side and shoved the rubber hose over the two bar sensor, screwed it in and zip tied it tight. So it only has one 3 8 vent. So what's really neat to see is even with one 3 8 vent, it only gets two pounds in the crankcase, in the valve cover. Incredible, really, in my opinion. So what would be neat now is to do like the vacuum style tests. Someone said he sent me a vacuum pump and one of those is to create more vacuum for like vacuum brakes, but we were thinking of using it for a cheap vacuum pump also, like turning it on uh, before you hit boost or something or only when the car's, like if you tell Terminator to turn the vacuum pump on at one PSI, technically I could take a relay and what's turning on the second fuel pump can turn on the vacuum pump because by the time the second fuel pump comes on, I just have a half a pound of crankcase pressure. Uh, down here, you know, it's nearly zero at, in vacuum. And then up here, uh, yeah, I got a half a pound. So we could save an output and wire it right to this. And when the second fuel pump engages, we can turn on the vacuum pump and we can see if we can get a some horsepower back by alleviating pumping loss because if there's pressure in the crankcase, the rings have to work in both directions. So there is 
what's called pumping loss, or it's it's basically a friction. I don't know if you call it friction. The assembly has to go into a pressurized space. So if you can create vacuum in the crankcase, at least from, I'm speaking purely of theory and what I've seen on like fullboost.com, dyno, dandy engines videos where, and uh, it is science and people have proven it. If you create vacuum in the crankcase, the rotating assembly can get drawn down with less resistance. Uh, therefore cre- freeing up some horsepower, you're, cr- you're losing uh, some restriction. Uh, whatever word you want to use for that, you are creating horsepower by making negative pressure in the crankcase. So it would be a very neat test if that kind of thing can create enough vacuum. Uh, we would be able to measure that and see the horsepower difference, obviously. Uh, I'm very excited to see the back pressure this low because the 8088 can't do that. The other turbo that I recommend for the higher horsepower combo, the don't uh, the one of the iterations, the last second to last of the Colorado, where it made like 990 wheel, and a lot of people copied that, and it does make 900 to 990 in a lot of vehicles with the 80 millimeter billet 88 turbine six liter is a fantastic powerhouse combination to make. 400 to nearly 1,000 horsepower to the tire. It works awesome. I can't say enough about it, but there were back pressure issues, and that was very evident when you, you know, get close to a thousand rear wheel. It would just choke out. It was done. So we have back pressure readings, and they're almost two to one at that point. So this turbo is exactly the same nearly, and just has a 102 turbine, and. Also, to be honest, this truck has a very restrictive exhaust in comparison, and that's one of the things I wanted to test also. So all the other cars that made 900 or 990 wheel have a dump, have like a three-foot exhaust pipe that's four-inch. So this has a tailpipe and a loud valve and a muffler and, uh, you know, more than likely lots of restriction because this truck very easily makes low 700 horsepower on like 14 pounds, and into the 20s here, it barely gets to 800 and 850 rear wheel. And uh, the back pressure number isn't lying, so that's not a problem. The big issue here is, I believe, just the exhaust pipe that's on the truck. But I'm so happy with a quiet, livable, drivable 8, 820, 850 that it can barely use that much power anyway. And we'll show you some boost by mile an hour clips too that uh, I'm impressed. So I don't even know if I want to do the five inch whoop de doo but I probably will just to learn and show you guys and get the data from it. So so here we brought it up to speed. What do we got here? 100% throttle. Again, what do we got? 22 pounds. I threw a ton of boost at it, 48% here. Just for fun, it peaked out at 26 pounds. 26 pounds. Uh, 82% duty cycle. It feels like it's eating the fuel. Uh, you can see here where we run into a exhaust back pressure issue, I believe. And on the dyno chart, you can see it comes up and falls off. So right after 6,000, it starts yanking fuel like crazy. And I believe that's just because the exhaust can't get enough out and it has to do something with the fuel. And you can tell because it doesn't make the horsepower and then also the back pressure still looks good it just comes up a little bit more than one to one i think just a little it's it's again it's a little bumpy but it's very close but it's just getting over one to one uh coolant pressure here not oh, going over 13 14 pounds very good crankcase two pounds again so everything's good i think we're just not getting the horsepower out which is something i pretty much called I'm like with this exhaust I'm not going I'm, it's probably gonna hold me back nothing but this exhaust and then the Duramax intercooler was an unknown so it's neat to see the Duramax intercooler seems to be doing really well the only thing uh, we could verify that by putting the pressure sensor moving one and relabeling it to you know turbo outlet pressure so now you can see the Delta over the intercooler so what you might find is I'm making 26 in the intake but I'm making 36 at the turbo so that would mean that the intercooler has a ton of pressure drop, like 10 pounds. So you're losing 10 pounds flowing air through the intercooler, which isn't terrible because it seems to be cooling really well. Uh, so there's all those ups and downs, right? But if you're dropping 10 pounds to the intercooler, there's definitely more than likely horsepower and flow loss there because it's such a restriction on pressure. 
yada, yada, yada. So if you guys are following along, I'm up in the air yet whether I want to change this to a 5-inch dump just to get the horsepower difference, just to know, or just be happy with what it is. Uh, it's one of those things where it might change daily, right? So hope you guys enjoyed all that. And I'll grab a clip of boost by mile an hour. Actually, I'll probably make another video because this one's probably too long already for just the scientific aspect. And then uh, you guys can just jump right to the boost by mile an hour test videos and that'll be a shorter video. It'll be more fun to watch.